like a different music box over there that will still make noise. No way. Oh my God. And it's facing the yes or no thing. That's right where she saw her son, which was not her son. Do you want us to leave this room? I'm getting like cold chills mm -hmm. right now. home slices home fries and homes of other varieties so in today's video we're going to be reacting to your guys's favorite paranormal nightmare season 18 episode 8 yes and guys on lights at midnight we're reacting to the episode after so if you haven't caught that episode please go watch it on our channel which I'll put up in the cards for you to click on and yeah it's very interesting but yeah so we're reacting to everything's demonic crazy family haunting when I see titles like saying something about the demonic or demons my interest is piqued because a lot of times people just jump to conclusions to say things are demonic because they don't understand what's going on. But I know with um, Paranormal Nightmare, a lot of the time they take parts of the interview or things that are said by the clients or clickbaity stuff, <laughs> but it still applies to their video. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if there is a demon up in this, this uh, haunting here. So yes, that's why I wanted to do it. But yeah, I have quite a few clips here, and as always, please watch the original video for context, and because they deserve the views, since it's their video that I'm reacting to, and obviously, they put a lot of hard work and time into their content and investigation, so please show them love. But yeah, so we're gonna roll into it here with the first clip, and here we go. Loud bangs coming from the kitchen. Things just start getting a little more strange. I think one of the scariest things probably that really made a big difference in knowing whether or not this was just some innocent thing going on here, or it's just spirits or whatever anybody wants to call them. The time that I was standing right behind you, my daughter was over there and she was already scared because we were hearing noises. And she came around, and as soon as she came around the balcony stair, she looked. And behind me, but stopping her from being able to see me, a seven foot tall, dark shadow figure. She screamed like she never screamed before in her life. I've never heard her scream like that before. That's when we knew, you know, things were really gonna take a dark turn. My son, he sees feet the foot of my bed. It bends down, it starts crawling under my bed very quickly, coming to him. And of course he ran, very scared. It was 10 in the morning, it was bright. There were no uh, dark shadows you could see from the nighttime that were just like lingering and you, his imagination ran wild. It was there. It's mimicked my son. Once I was out in the front yard, I looked in there was the light that was on in the office room. Clear as day, there's my son, or what I thought was. I, I had a feeling, because it was like he was stuck. There was no movement. It was, just, and it was like I was watching for a few seconds, but then I got back to doing what I was doing, and I thought that seemed odd. So I came in the house eventually, and then I asked him, were you ever in there? And he said, no. My husband has heard my son call him, my daughter was sitting at the dining room table. She just watched as she thought he pulled open the door, put his stuff away, and walked out. And I come back in from being outside, and she said, can we ask Dad if we can go somewhere? And I said, Dad's not here. He was walking past the bathroom door on the in interior of the hallway. And as he's passing in his peripheral, he's seen what looked to be a shadow 
and it was almost as if he felt that it was angry. I don't know what's really going on, but uh, he did feel that anger from whatever was standing there. My room, this room, the hallway upstairs, the laundry room creeps me out. The basement, we saw a footprint in water. So the footprints were in here? Right, right about there. She was affected by something. She started to feel very sad. She was walking in the hallway upstairs and something touched her shoulder. She texted me and said, Mom, something just touched my shoulder. So right off the bat, based off of what they're saying and their experiences, it's easy to say that the entity or entities that they're dealing with are very trickstery. I think there are multiple spirits and entities. I feel like the main one is the trickster and the other ones are earthies. But, you know, I'll go through more of this in detail. But the fact that it shapeshifts, the fact that it mimics, the fact that, like, they're seeing shadows and there's patterns of violence in the family, they think it's a curse. Yeah, I mean, this this case is going to be extremely, extremely complex. So at 1 minute 20 seconds, I did see a shadow in the bedroom move from the left to the right. I mean, I'm already seeing things and picking things up. And yeah, this this is a heavy this is a heavy location. For the religion, my husband and I bought a house that we were told was haunted. Once I started the religion, things stopped. And I believe that it was also due to the fact this particular religion is geared towards Satanism, but most people don't know. And I think it was almost as if it was appeasing things. The first day at this new house, my husband heard walking. Things just ramped heavily. We were hearing screams. We saw shadow people, and I believe that we just appeased things for a while because we were in a religion that was uh, geared towards that, demonic. Why did you leave the religion? Oh, I found images, subliminal images in their publications, subliminal messages, very evil things. Oh, at the time I thought everything was demonic. At that time, I thought everything was. Because I was told ghosts don't exist. When you die, your body goes to the ground and your thoughts perish. And I said, well, then anything we're experiencing is definitely demonic. Not everything is evil, but there are entities and things we can't explain. I think it's a combination. I don't know what makes a mimic. I don't know what a mimic is, but all I know is it's mimicking. I don't know what that is. But I do know that there are dark, dark shadows, things that are looming over me as a parent, scaring, sorry, scaring the daylights out of my kids. So if there's something that's gonna stand behind me and tower over me to make me look helpless with my child watching, I don't see that as innocent, period. He heard laughter standing right there at the door. My chest starts to hurt and I'll leave the house and I'll go somewhere else and I'll feel fine. She tried to attempt to engage again and a flashlight went off, but then after that, nothing. We got EVPs, we, we had footsteps down here that her and I both heard. Whatever it is, is hiding. That's all I know. I do know that. I do know that whatever it is, is hiding. Whatever it is that's evil, is hiding. I don't suffer from nightmares. But within the last two weeks, I've had some that I don't even want to repeat. I can't repeat in front of the kids. And I think it needs to be pushed. Mm -hmm. I really do. Because it's here. But at this point, I really don't care. Because I know what I've seen. I know what my kids have seen. It's not a mass hallucination. It's just time to end the evil. Whatever is here, it's just time to, to be done with it. They won't sleep in their rooms because of this. There's been murders in our family. My mother tried killing my brother. Her brother, my uncle, killed his son. My grandfather was killed by his father. There is a lot of evil 
uh, murderous people in my side of the family. I definitely am not an atheist. I believe I would be silly to think that all of this came about by chance. And the very first paranormal team, they did a cleansing in our old house, but it didn't work. They salted around the entire home, splashed holy water. They made us drink holy water. So they talk about how a paranormal team did come before and cleanse, but it didn't work. They salted around the entire home, used holy water, even had the family drink the holy water, and none of it worked. Not to be a Karen or that biatch, um, just by their techniques of cleansing tells me they don't quite know what they're doing. First of all, I do not recommend salting around an area, especially if you don't see all that's going on and you're just guessing. Because what salting around like the perimeter of a house can do is trap things in. You don't want that. And I can see that there are multiple things going on. And the only time I would salt, not that I would personally do this method, but if someone was going to do it regardless, you have to make sure the home is completely cleared out and you better know, you better know for a fact that it's cleared out. Because like I said, if you saw around that house and you put it around the perimeter, if you don't get everything out of that space, it's gonna be trapped there and it's gonna be pissed off. So you do not want to salt around your space. Yes, if used the right way, it'll stop things from coming in, but they didn't do it. They didn't do it correctly. Um, and the family drinking holy water, I don't know. I felt that was like out of desperation. When cleansing negative energy, I'm not saying that it doesn't work like in the body, you could. Though, be damn sure that that's clean because a lot of times holy water has certain like, it depends where you get it. But if you get it from a church, just make sure it's clean. And yeah, if you just do it right from the tap and that no one touches it, it's fine. But even then, I don't know. I just get grossed out by that. And second, like, if you're trying to cleanse the energy from a person's body, you can use Reiki. <laughs> you don't have to use holy water for that. You can use holy oil and put it on your body, at your on your uh, chakra points. You don't have to drink it. You can also, depending on the circumstance, if it's just removing, like, residual stuff, you can use like the smoke of incense um, for more detrimental things. Yeah, I would use the holy oil on your chakra points. Um, but Reiki is also another good method. Um, you could do a deliverance with a priest or an exorcism based on the type of Christianity, whether it's Catholicism or just, you know, basic Pentecostal or just Christianity, that would be the deliverance. It's more of a lighter kind of exorcism. You could do that route. In this case, I feel like the big bad entity is an attachment. Um, so I feel like Either a deliverance or an exorcism would help in Reiki, of course. But if they're getting attacked in the home, especially at nighttime when they're trying to sleep, that's when the holy oil is very effective. So if you're getting more physical attacks or like sleep paralysis or stuff like that, I would definitely go for the holy oil, which you can literally buy on Amazon for like $10 or less. I have plenty of it. I use it in my incense, but yes. And the other reason why it did not work is because of the portal situation 
and they have to find the origin of the cause or the point of entry. If you do not find the point of entry, that's when you're gonna have issues trying to kick things out. Because if it's due to a certain behavior that you're doing or mindset and you don't change those things, it's just gonna come back. So yes, and I think in this case, there is potentially multiple points of entry. I would say about three to four, based off of what I got psychically. Um, but I think the family is naturally sensitive to energy, not saying they're mediums or anything. You can be sensitive to energy, not be mediums. And when you are sensitive to energy, this can allow spirits and entities the opportunity to communicate with, oppress, and manipulate. So because of this, too, it can draw things in because they want that energy to feed off of. The second one, I think there is a major cycle due to the family's energy sensitivity that they need to break, and that has to do, too, with manipulation from entities, understanding their um, sensitivities, how to manage it, and break the influence through those things because that influence tends to lead to cycles of violence. So we don't want that. But yeah, there's, there's cycles that they have to break. And it might come across as a curse, but I don't believe it's a curse, really. I think it's just cycles that they have to break. When you fully believe something is a curse, it can become curse-like in the way it oppresses you. And so it's always best to kind of have more of like that um, more positive mindset and don't jump to the worst conclusion because your thoughts can become reality via manifestation. And I feel like another point of entry, which is one of the biggest points of entry here, is their fear mindset, which when you're going through oppression, I understand that stuff can be extremely traumatic and scary. And two, based off of how they are raised, depending on like religion and stuff, that is important. Um, some religions are more fear-based than others. And I feel like that has to do with a lot of what's going on. Now, the next potential point of entry. So this one I'm not sure, but they did say something about a religion that they followed that kind of was similar to Satanism. Now, when someone has a fear mindset, if it's not exactly their perceived correct religion, everything could seem like it's Satanism when it's not. But so that's why I'm saying maybe. But if it is geared to darker things or occult things, then yes, this could also attract and open up a person to spirits and entities, hauntings, and attachments. Now, of course, there could be more points of entry, but these are the ones that I found. So yeah. So because this is a complex situation, I, instead of channeling before the video starts, I ran it to about 10 minutes and 11 seconds which I'm glad I did because it allowed me to get more information. So I have pages of notes. I have a total of nine pages of notes, which are already on Patreon. So you can go and look those up because some things in these notes I don't talk about in the video only because we'd be here for a year and a half. So yes, so I'm gonna go through my psychic impressions. One thing I noticed pretty quickly, even before the video had started, the entities and spirits, they tend to drain energy fairly quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Foreman brothers, when they were investigating, if they went through a lot of batteries and much quicker than usual. And so I was having trouble staying awake, but then when I started my active meditation, I was able to get re-energized and that wasn't much of a problem. 
but I did notice like when I watched the video and did all this stuff I started having more pains like bladder pain head pain and stuff like that when I was fine that entire day so this thing can trigger health issues especially ones that already pre-exist I will say the entity likes to appear extremely large and uses the walls to stretch itself bigger, especially in the corners. In this entity's case, it uses this as an intimidation tactic as part of how it oppresses the family, squeezing out as much fear as possible to feed off of. This isn't the case for all entities that do this. I'm just saying specifically in this entity's case, that's why it does that. I kept seeing woods. Now, I have a very strong feeling that I need to paint these woods, so I will probably do that. I haven't done it yet, but by the time this video comes out, I will probably have finished doing it. So I'm going to do that because these woods were very vivid. And then I kept seeing this specific chair. And I'll show you my notes of the chair. But I kept seeing this chair. Now, I don't know if they have a wooden chair like that. But if they do, there's something going on with this chair. Now, it I suspect that it's either haunted or has some residual energy tied to it. But there's something going on with the chair. And it was hard to figure out what. So, if the family sees this video or the Foreman brothers see this video, if they know anything about a specific chair, let me know. I then saw a pentagram with like these lines going around it. I saw a moth, an owl, and then like this swirly like black spinny thing which I know now is a portal. So here are the images that I drew. Now, with the pentagram here, I looked over and over and over the internet, on Google, on Pinterest, everywhere, and it took me so long to figure this out. But I learned that depending on how the um, pentagram is like used, the, s the lines could indicate the, t the rotation of elements which is important depending on the type of witchcraft. I forget what they're called, but in one type of witchcraft, depending on what, like if it's going this way, it could mean invocation. And then the other one, it could mean banishment. And then seeing the moth and owl makes me suspect that this has to do with either witchcraft or some kind of occult religion or something. And I know the family was talking about going and practicing a religion that they didn't speak like um, outright of which one it is. So it makes me wonder if this religion that they practiced temporarily has anything to do with these symbols. If it does, then yeah, this could be one of the points of interest here and the portal the portal is interesting because i've never seen one that moves the way it does this one moves around the space not by a lot but enough to not always be in the same spot and it seems to warp simultaneously it's multi-dimensional and when i say it moves it's subtle movements but then i was seeing it like in other rooms making it look like there were multiple portals, but I'm, I, I want to say it might be the same one because of how it moves. But there's definitely a portal in the location. The negative entity has a way of causing panic attacks and making a person feel like their air has been sucked from their lungs, making it hard to breathe. So at one point, I felt like I was about to have a panic attack, but I realized, no, like, this isn't me. This isn't me causing this. This is paranormal related. I did see an image of an open door. I drew it. And I feel like it's more of a metaphor in terms of boundaries with the family. 
I then started seeing people wearing black robes around a bonfire, seeing a clock with the hand constantly going clockwise. So that tells me that this might have something to do with the point of interest. So maybe it had to do with the religion they got um, interested in and that that was a catalyst and literally an open door invitation for entities or spirits to come in. But again, here is the image. Could also be a symbol for a portal as well. One thing I did notice was the entity is really great at going into incognito mode and being elusive when it wants, which made it really difficult to figure out what type of entity it was because it was hard to track down. What I do know is from the things that it's done, it is non-human and it's a trickster and it's also a shit talker. And one of the images that I got, and it's kind of funny, I'll play it as long as I don't get demonetized because it's from a TV show. But in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there's this episode where she's at a college, I think it's a college Halloween party, where this person does some kind of ritual and it brings upon like nightmares and things. And there's a demon, like when she breaks the pentagram, there's this little demon <laughs> that's causing all this chaos. And she's like, oh, it's so cute. But it's like, I don't know, it's a shit talker, really. And it causes all this havoc, even though it's itty bitty. And I feel like that is what this thing is. I'm not saying like the entity is tiny. I'm just saying like it's a shit this talker actor? like that entity in that Big show. Overture. Little show. I am the dark lord of nightmares. The bringer of terror. Tremble before me. Fear me. He, he's so cute. Tremble. Who's a little fear demon? Come on. Who's a little fear demon? Don't I taunt bring the terror. fear demon. Be that I as it may. Buffy, when it comes to slaying... Size doesn't matter? They're all going to abandon you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I did see this. Specifically, I just see an, a hand holding a cross like this. And it made me think... For stubborn, malevolent entities, this doesn't work when you're terrified that it won't work. So if you have any, like, doubts that what you're doing cleansing-wise isn't going to work, it's not going to work. It works best with confidence in those you ask for help from. So it's okay to be afraid, especially in the situation, but when you ask for help from angels or whomever... You have to be sure that you're asking for help with conviction or you're doing your cleansing with conviction that what you're doing will take away the problem. In addition to other like protective measures that you do, you have to do it with conviction and confidence. So yeah, that's important. And you have to stop risky behaviors or practices that attract things because if you don't, like I said earlier, your cleansings aren't going to do very much. And the biggest thing too, the fear mindset has to change. Believing everything is demonic is doing more harm than good. And teaching their children to be afraid, which puts a target on their back as well. When you are afraid that everything is demonic, that makes those negative entities much stronger and capable of being more effective in their oppressive techniques. So nightmares, the paranormal activity, they're feeding off of that fear. That's why they do those oppression techniques. It's to scare you because they feed off of that energy. It's a cycle, an ongoing cycle. So it would be best to work on that fear mindset 
Not everything is demonic. Even if you cannot explain it, okay, doesn't mean it's demonic. I know people tend to fear things that they don't understand, which is normal. That's part of our survival and that's how we live, really, because if things scare us, we get the heck out of Dodge and that protects us from danger. But in terms of paranormal, there's a difference between being afraid versus being cautious because, how do I explain this? It's like knowing what you're up against. So I'm not gonna go walk in the middle of the night in North Philly in some alley with fancy jewelry because I know that I'll probably get robbed. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of going to North Philly because of that, but I'm smart enough to know that so bad things don't happen. So you have to find that balance. So that's what I'm just trying to say here. It's smart to be protective and taking protective measures and ceasing all behaviors that might result in something dangerous or negative, that's okay if you prepare yourself. But you don't want to have that fear mindset and being scared of everything. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> and then I did remote view into the kitchen area and strangely... Strangely, I have a vision of myself working with the Foreman brothers during an investigation of a family home. I'm sitting in the dark with earplugs and headphones, a blindfold and a pen and paper at a kitchen table while they do their investigation. When they are done, I provide them with my findings, which helps pinpoint the origin and use an even more effective way to cleanse the client's space. Could this be me on the astral realm assisting them? Maybe. Or is this a vision of maybe a potential outcome? Maybe I'll get to work with the Foreman brothers. That would be freaking lit. And I would jump at that opportunity. But it's interesting because I wasn't thinking about that kind of stuff. When I do these channels, my mind is focused on the things I want to uncover which is like the entity, the entity type, how many portals, stuff like that. I wasn't thinking about that. So I know it wasn't like wishful thinking. So, and interestingly enough, so I told T Chastity about this vision and she's like, what the heck? I literally had like the same vision. And I was like, lamp, future collab maybe? I don't know but it was interesting. I did come into contact with Archangel Michael because I wasn't getting as much information as I would have liked about the entity specifically. And so I asked him, I was like, what the heck, man? What is this? What is going on here? And he told me this entity doesn't have one form it sticks to. So to see its true self, or true form is nearly impossible, especially because it uses the energy it consumes to help itself shapeshift, which is why this particular entity is able to shapeshift into family members. So that was interesting to learn. And you know, as an example, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, if you ever watch the show, The Boys, so there is this one soup from the show towards the most recent season, where the soup touches Annie and turns into her and becomes her. And the entity can literally do the same thing, but through consuming energy. A lot of the time it uses the energy of the family's fears to shapeshift accordingly, along with paranormal oppressive techniques to have them produce more of the negative energy. I will say it does like to appear as a thick, large black humanoid shadow the majority of the time, but it's not like it's true form. It just likes to appear that way because it knows it terrifies the mother and the children. 
But again, it's not limited to just that one form. It can do whatever it wants. Then I started seeing like, okay, I'll show you the picture. It's like just random shapes. But to me, that is like my symbol for thought form. Don't ask me why, <laughs> but that's what it is for thought form. So at this point, I am confident that the entity was created at some point in time through a collection of energy that eventually manifests into its own consciousness. From there, it continued growing from feeding off of more energy until it was attracted to the family, specifically the woman side of the family. I suspect it's been with her for a long time. And it's not just haunting the space, it's also haunting her as an attachment. So I think too, when you do risky things that can attract negative entities, a negative entity can be with a person for a long time. And then it's like, until that person does that behavior. And I know they didn't say anything about a Ouija board, but this is just an example. So like if people use a Ouija board and they had an attachment that wasn't so severe, it can become severe because it uses the Ouija board as a gateway to enter closer to the realm that they're physically in. So I feel like it used some of the things that they did. So the religion, potentially, again, because we don't know exactly what religion they got involved in, but if it was something on the occult end of things, that could have been the gateway for it and or the fear mindset. But it's possible that, and I'm not saying that this is the case, I'm just saying it's possible because I'm not 100% sure. This entity could have been with the family lineage for a long time. But it was only until she did certain things in her life that brought it closer to her in the physical realm. So there is that. And the whole deal with like the people in the black robes around the fire. When it comes to interpreting some of the symbols and images that I see, it can get difficult because they have or can have multiple meanings. So like that could mean that maybe it was conjured by a bunch of people. It could also mean that um, they were involved in the religion that did that thing. So it's hard to say. But those are the potential like things that could have happened. The dark shadow that the family sees throughout this house. Come forward and make yourself known. It's definitely a male voice there. The person that we heard just a minute ago we want you to come forward and talk to us. We are trying to figure out why you're here and if you have a message. That sounds like a really cool one. Down there. Out. Is it in there or is it out? Go out there. Yeah. Are you back here? There are some say yes. If you just set off our alarm in here, who are you? I thought I heard a voice. I did too. It sounded like a female. Who are you?
So at this point, I resume the video. And so from 11 minutes to 13 minutes, I realize that the dark entity isn't with the Foreman brothers in the house. Because of this, the Earthies are getting bold and coming out to communicate with them. Which also solidifies the fact that it's an attachment. It went with her when they left the house. I suspect the activity the family members experience is different from when the mother is inside the home versus when she's not. Because like I said, it's an attachment. Yes, it's active either way, but the energy is not as malevolent or evil when she's not there. And again, that's not her fault. I'm not saying she's evil or anything. It's the attachment. The Earthies just want out. They feel stuck there, especially when the dark entity is there. Because it is a dark entity and it feeds off of any kind of source of energy. So that could be the Earthies as well. Around the 14 minute mark, the Earthies there aren't mimicking. They're not the ones doing that. That Again, that's the dark entity. So they aren't going to set off the alarms or do some of the things they want them to. I heard the man say to another if he should set the alarm off to answer for the dark entity, but the other person said, no, don't, they will think it's us doing it which is a valid point. Is all the alarms that's been going off have been the original part of the house? Everything that we've heard has been the original part of the house, like from the stairwell back. That was loud, whatever the hell that was. Dude, that was like a growl. Was that you? Come in here and set one of these alarms off. Sounds like it's downstairs in the basement now. I got a camera down there. So. so Around this time, the dark entity does come back because it feels territorial. So when I saw it come back, it literally came running in like a bull kind of way and was like, and it was kind of like protecting its space in a way. And around 27 minutes and 30 seconds, I started to hear a low rumbling, which was interesting. And I feel like it has to do with that negative entity. During channeling and meditating, my energy levels had returned to normal, but since that negative entity came back around the 25 minute mark, that's when my energy started to go fast. Then I jumped to 39 minutes, um, because their video is kind of long, sorry, but I did feel burning on the back part of my right shoulder and back at that point. It is Jesus who has authority over this house. Any spirits inside this house communicating with this family, we banish you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you watch over this family and keep them safe. Drive out this dark and negative energy. We close all entryways, doorways, and portals that may have been open inside this house. This house is forever protected in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse this house of anything evil in your name. We call on the Holy Spirit to fill this darkness with the light of the Holy Spirit. Let there be no dark place for the evil ones to hide. Any spirits, please go towards the light and be at peace. Drive out all the negative, dark energy inside this house. We banish you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you watch over this family and keep them safe as we move on to the next case and the next family. Lord, we just pray for this family that you just keep them safe. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Although my brothers and I were unable to document anything sinister haunting this home, we are confident the home is being haunted by multiple different spirits. 
As with all investigations, there is no guarantee that the spirits will simply just move on. Hopefully with continued cleansings by the family, everything will eventually dissipate and the spirits can finally be at peace. And then I skip to an hour and five minutes for the cleansing to see what they were doing because I suspected that it wasn't going to help like the initial group that tried to help them cleanse. The main entity is an attachment, so you have to take care of the attachment. The portal is also still open, so you gotta take care of the portal. The family has their own healing cycles to break, fears to squash, etc. There's a lot of work that the family must do on their end in order for this cleansing to work. And a lot of times you have to do all these things simultaneously. I feel like there's some mental health stuff that the mother needs to take care of on her end, just through things that she's experienced through life. Um, the fears and stuff like that, she's gotta work on that. And once you can get that initial like core to cut, that's when it would be good to work on cleansing the body using Reiki techniques or holy oil or stuff like that, crystals, whatever you want, and then cleansing the space too at the same time. I'm not saying like cleansing the space wouldn't help in any way. It does help a little bit. It helps get rid of like the other things there that are not attachments. But again, you have to address the portal situation and there is something going on with the woods. So I don't know what happened in there. Maybe they did rituals in there, whether it was the family or other people. And randomly, I do see a cat sitting above the person's head, like the family member. I don't know if they have a cat. If they have a cat and it's sleeping on like the top of your head, it's protecting you spiritually and um, metaphysically. So if she's not having nightmares, that could be why. Um, and then in terms of if they don't have a cat, maybe that would help them. But the, I don't know why I was seeing a cat sleeping above their head. In terms of the video, I'm going to cut it there, but I do have a note to the family and to the Foreman brothers. So if you guys are serious and you watch this video and you want help and are willing to follow through the advice that I provide, please contact me either through Instagram DMs or website, which are always listed down below under all my videos. I'm extremely confident that I can be helpful in some way and I feel like I can improve the situation in some way. And of course I would do it for free. The Foreman brothers helped you and all that stuff. I would do it for free. And that goes for any case I cover on my channel, like through a reaction or if I cover it in some other way. But um, if I cover it on my channel, Again, I would help those people for free because I'm using their like stuff as content. So it's only right that I would do that for free. And then the note for the Foreman brothers. So uh, one day I feel like I might be working with you uh, <laughs> or alongside you guys, Amy Allen style, maybe in like a one-off collab or like multiple times. I don't know, but I get this strong feeling that I will be helping you guys out. And this is not wishful thinking. This is literally through the vision I had or actual realm experience that I had while channeling this information. If you guys are open to it. And when I say Amy Allen style, so if you ever watch The Dead Files, and again, thank you Chastity for introducing that show to me. So when she does her walkthrough, there's a guy on her team that removes all like photos or anything that could give her information. But for me, I would do it blindfolded. I don't care. But that's just how I roll. I use blindfolds 
for all my channeling, seriously, I have more than one blindfold, that's just how I do it. But um, all I need is that, a pen and a paper, and some headphones. And it's almost like a walking Estes method. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why I was seeing that, but I was seeing it and I think maybe in the future we might end up doing that, so... But um, I also see myself doing that with a few other YouTube creators in the paranormal community. So if you're a creator in the community and you do investigations, hit me up <laughs> because I don't need a lot of information to do what I do. Like I said, all I need is my pen, my paper, my headphones, and my blindfold. That's all I need. I don't need to like see anything. I am clairsentient, so I pick up information through my hands and my feet. It's all I need. So now, after this, I'm going to work on painting the woods because I'm very drawn to do so. So yeah, if the Foreman brothers watch this monster of a video because it's long AF, um, let me know what you think. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of awkward in a way. But yeah, guys, I am going to end the video here. If you manage to watch it this long, wow, you guys are amazing. <laughs> but again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys soon and peace out.